So, well, Under the Apple Tree started in this studio six years ago, it was, and um, a friend of ours had called in to see us, Christian Bush from the country bank Sugarland. My son Miles was doing an internet radio show at the time, and, and Christian just played a session for Miles while they were chatting. Um, and we thought, what a good idea it would be to start sessions, first of all, on Miles' show. Uh, so he just recorded sessions, sound recorded sessions to start with. And then more and more, he began to put cameras on the, the sessions so that he began to film them, edit them. We then created a YouTube channel called Whispering Bob TV. So he started posting the sessions on the channel. It's grown from there, you know, stage by stage. Um, we then began to take Under the Apple Tree out onto various stages at festivals and at country to country in Black Deer. We started hosting concerts at Bush Hall in London and at the Cadogan Hall in London. So, um, yeah, that's that's how it grew. And now the site is, or at least the platform has had nearly 2 million hits and we've got over 400 sessions posted up there. So, you know, it's grown in the most incredible way. Well, Wildwood Kin, we love Wildwood Kin. They came in here to do a session right in their early days. Uh, a couple of years ago, I chose them as my emerging artists at the Americana Music Awards. Um, and they appeared with me on the Whistle Test reboot that went out last year. Uh, so clearly we love them. They're, they're just great. We love their music. And Live Nation approached us with the idea of taking Under the Apple Tree out to a wider audience, bigger venues, a tour across the UK. So when we were talking with Live Nation, you know, it seemed absolutely logical for us to suggest Wildwood Ken. Ferris and Sylvester, uh, again, they've done sessions here with us a couple of times. I've hosted them on the um, uh, BBC Country File live stage <laughs> last year at Blenheim Palace. Uh, we love their music, you know, it's very different, just the two of them, you know, male, female, there's quite a blues edge to their music, uh, it's quite raw, uh, very spontaneous, uh, and then at each of the venues that we're playing across the country, we've invited a local artist to join us just for that one particular night, so say in Bristol it's Foreign Affairs, in Norwich, it's Morgan Way, uh, in London, it's the Worry Dolls, and like that. So it also does what we do here, and that's have an open door to sort of grassroots talent that we want to support. important I mean we were a few months ago we did a an evening at Bush Hall as part of the Country Music Week in London in October and um, we had Ellen and Nelly open the evening uh, right at the start of the show 7 30 and you're always worried that there'll be stragglers coming in that the place will be half empty or whatever it is it was packed straight from the start uh, and Eleanor couldn't believe it it was such a beautiful moment because she only played about four songs and at the end when she said well thank you very much and good night she got a standing ovation and the look on her face to start with she looked over her shoulder to see if it must have been somebody else coming up on stage to get this ovation and then, and then she realized it was her you know so you'll miss moments like that if you come late was, that moment happened because people were, were in the venue early so yeah i really recommend to come early it really is amazing i mean i started on the country show in 1999 um, and at that point nashville was still quite insular a lot of the big stars in those days didn't necessarily see the virtue of coming all the way over to the UK, possibly even losing money on a tour. You know, they, they were saying millions of records in America. They didn't need to. 
But then gradually a new generation of artists started emerging, you know, people like Brad Paisley and then Keith Urban, uh, Rascal Flatts, Lone Star, Taylor, vitally important, Taylor Swift, um, who did see the virtue in coming over to Europe, who did want to build a fan base here. Um, we then began, there were artists beginning to emerge from our music scene that had kind of grown up with their parents' country music collection, let's say, but had also been listening to lots of other styles of music through the years. Uh, and I'm thinking particularly of Ben and Chrissy in the Shires, who heard a, a duo in America called the Civil Wars, who massively inspired them. Um, you know, that, that duo harmony thing, Ward Thomas had bought, bought the same sort of thing. Bands like Raintown, now Morgan Way, Wildwood Kin, uh, the Wandering Hearts, all of these bands have been in here in the studio doing an Under the Apple Tree session through the last few years. But they're also, all of them, their audiences are growing and they've become part of the whole sort of country to country, country music movement that now is so vibrant here. It's unbelievable to see the way that it's grown. So that 20 years, when I was playing country music on the radio 20 years ago, I was just about the only person who really was. 20 years on, that lane is now full. Uh, lots of, you know, there are, there are two country music television channels. There's a new country, national country music station starting soon. Chris Country has been on air for quite a while. Uh, this C2C, the whole country music uh, scene in Britain is so vibrant now and I'm so proud of that. Song. I think with folk music and with country, it's so much about the song. You know, the lyrics are important. In country in particular, the songs are, they genuinely are telling the stories of people's lives. Um, you know, t Taylor was doing that uh, when she was putting out her first couple of albums. You know, she was discussing issues that affected her in her life at that moment, being a young girl, you know, whether she was getting on well at school, whether she'd just broken up with her latest boyfriend. And she, she, her lyrics were expressing what my daughter, who was just a little bit younger, was feeling. You know, Flo absolutely locked into Taylor because Taylor was kind of singing her life. Um, and that's what country music has done always. You know, you go back into the 50s and the 60s and, you know, you go explore into bluegrass music. And there's a lot of reality in those lyrics uh, of a lot of those songs that life is not always easy. You know, you're struggling through the hard times sometimes. And country music has a, a, a really amazing way of, of gathering that up and delivering it as the truth. You know, that is the summary of country music, three chords and the truth. There's, uh, I, I love Jimmy Allen. Um, it's not easy being a black uh, country music star. He's one of only sort of three or four, really. That, that you know, there's Darius Rucker, uh, Charlie Pride, obviously Kane Brown, and now um, uh, he, Jim, Jimmy Allen is absolutely fantastic. He has a single out called Best Shot, which I really love. It was number one in America for weeks. Uh, so Jimmy Allen definitely, you, you know, I'm very big fan of a UK guy called Robert Vincent. He's probably more in the Americana style, but Robert's got a new album coming out soon, produced by Ethan Johns, which he recorded partly here. He's done recording also in Nashville. So, you know, Robert is a big uh, favorite of mine as well. Well, country's been very resilient through the years. Um, and I think it's it, it, it's been that way partly because of its willingness to sort of absorb influences from outside it, you know, into the music without it corrupting the music too much. Um, you know, you think of artists now like Maren Morris and Casey Musgraves, and, you know, they've been listening to music on the radio throughout their entire lives. As well as country music, there are other styles that they like. And so they pull some of the influences of those styles into their music as well. You know, you see in Nashville people like Thomas Rhett, who's taken country right across into pop. I think that's a good thing because then that music is being listened to by the 18, 19, 22 year olds or whatever. Uh, a young audience, in other words, which is going to take that music into the future. So 
I think that's really a, a healthy thing that you've now got this amazing feed line of brand new country music artists coming into mainstream absolutely all the time. It, the, the, the vibrancy and the energy from country now is fantastic. In terms of the impact of, of future technologies, we don't know yet, do we? I mean, it's it, it still seems an incredible thing to me to think that maybe even as recently as like 20 years ago, you were still going to your local record shop, you know, you'd order an album and it would take a bit of time to get it in. You were, you were going to collect it uh, in the 70s, of course, there's that whole thing with vinyl uh, and you pick the record up. Often it was in shrink wrapping and, you know, you'd slice down the edge of the shrink wrap and you'd, you'd take the the, the the vinyl out the album and put it on you the deck you'd pick the needle up and put it on the and there would be your your music it was the the the, the process of it was kind of ritualistic it was in itself the process of of putting that record on the turntable was was something very attractive and i you know i do miss that although vinyl is is coming back more and more but what we didn't have then that we do have now is the biggest record shop in the world on a screen in front of you on your desktop. Uh, the access to music now is phenomenal and I'm sure that's going to just increase more and more. But for somebody just getting into music now, for teenagers who, you know, they use the internet, they're willing to explore, there's a world of music out there at their fingertips, which it would have taken me a long time to discover, you know, shop by shop, record by record, 20 or 30 years ago. So this is, you know, it's a really, really good time. Is it